Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Crying News Story Interview Session. This is a program where we are inviting investors, stakeholders, and influencers in the blockchain, crypto, and fintech ecosystem to come air their, their mind and state of the ecosystem and make some contributions. So today we'll be talking about building on Casper uh, network. So I have with me a, a, an innovator and a, a, a stakeholder in the ecosystem, Ms. Uh, Reina Manoha, who is the CEO and co-founder of Casper Labs. Right now, you're welcome to Crying News Esther. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm uh, glad to be here. And hello to hello to your audience. Uh, hope this is informative and helpful. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you uh, joining us. So, so how is New York today? New York is uh, sunny. We've uh, we we had a we had a blizzard uh, a week or so ago, uh, but now it's bright and sunny. So. Uh, Everyone here is in a good mood. Yeah, that's very glad to know. It used to be cool. It's kind of really sunny today at work. That's very much uh, a good one. So uh, before we move to the topic of the day, I would like to get a background about you, just a brief background about you, Mira. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm a computer scientist. Um, I got my master's at Carnegie Mellon. I, uh, but, you know, I went, went to work on Wall Street right after that. I was at Bain & Company for uh, about two and a half years, and then Bain Capital in private equity and LBOs for about two and a half years. And then um, joined a long only hedge fund where uh, I eventually became sector head for technology and telecom. Um, but then pivoted, uh, have been focusing on blockchain technology exclusively since 2017. But I've been in, involved in distributed computing most of my adult life, actually. Um, I was an open source contributor to BitTorrent way back in 2002. Uh, started buying Bitcoin in 2012. Became a serial angel investor in the space. Was in the earliest uh, investment stages of Ethereum, Filecoin, uh, Maker, a uh, bunch of protocols. And uh, saw that there was a huge opportunity uh, to, to bring something differentiated to the market and decided to co-found uh, Casper Labs. Uh, which is a software company uh, behind the Casper Network, which is run by the nonprofit Casper Association. Interesting from an investor to a founder is a very nice one. Uh, that's a very nice background. So we are looking at bidding on the Casper Network. Uh, we would like to understand what is Casper Network and who can build on it. So Casper, the, the, the network is a Turing complete smart contracting platform, uh, very similar to uh, Ethereum in the sense of what its eventual modality is. But really you can build pretty much anything on it because it's a Turing complete system. But in addition to you know, the regular smart contracting features, we have a lot of things that are enterprise grade uh, and you know, really, really developer friendly. For example, we support open programming standards. We support Rust and assembly script right out the gate. So you don't have to learn a new programming language. And over time, because we're WebAssembly based, we can really uh, create any sort of compilation targets and support any of the programming languages up. In addition to that, we have continuous integration and continuous deployment built into the protocol. We have flexible payment code. We have weighted key management. And all of these are unique features that really allow you to create um, an end user experience where the blockchain could almost become invisible. And if you think about the best technologies out there like AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Akamai, you know, you're never, you don't know you're using it even though you're using it every day. And really we think that's, that's uh, core and really, really important uh, in the blockchain space. So basically, you know, if you're in complete platform, you can build anything you want. Yeah, knowing very well that you can build anything you want. You know, there have been some uh, platforms or networks that are not that uh, decentralized, even though they are on the blockchain. Uh, so is how decentralized is, is it to build a Casper network? The Casper network is absolutely decentralized and permissionless, meaning, so we'll talk about both ends of it. One is, um, it's completely decentralized for application developers. You develop an application, you build on the network, it, it, it just works. There's no, you don't need any permission from anyone. 
it's an open system, just like just like the Bitcoin and Ethereum systems out there. Um, the the second thing is even the validators and the people running the network. Again, a completely open and permissionless system. Anyone can acquire a stake in the network, spin up their own hardware, and as long as you know they they provide uptime and you know they're. Uh, part of the network, they will earn rewards uh, for being part of uh, setting up uh, setting up the system. So there's no there's no permissioning, there's no there's no DPoS. It's a straight up open and permissionless system. Interesting to know that. I, I was I took a, a little time to go through your bio. Uh, I guess that should be on LinkedIn. And I saw you wrote on your bio at uh, centralization and open source, you are, on your bio you wrote decentralization and open source purists at heart. What do you have in mind writing that? So, so let's talk about both separately. So let's talk about what I mean by being an open source purist. You know, we're, we're an open source software company, meaning our source code is completely public. Um, anyone can use it, fork it, do what you want with it. Um, and I think that's really, really important. You know, I've been a Linux user most of my life. And the reason Linux is such a great operating system and, you know, runs most of our world's servers is because it's been open source. Uh, I think open source software allows, you know, radical innovation. And of course, I was an open source contributor to BitTorrent. And so, you know, always have believed that, you know, people think the free open source software model uh, necessitates that you know you can't build you know profitable businesses or or create you know profitable and enriching uh, platforms, but I would I would make the counter argument and say that it's actually created the most enriching and uh, participatory systems. You know you think about Linux, you think about Bitcoin, you think about several smart contracting platforms out there. Uh, the ones that are open source have always tended to do better. And then on decentralization, you know, I, I really think that the core value proposition of blockchain is that it's permissionless and there isn't a centralized uh, authority figure. And so, you know, every decision we make while running the software, for example, we don't even participate in the network. We are just a software publisher. The network is run completely by individual actors. And, you know, we ensure that the network doesn't have, we, we have no influence on the network other than the fact that, you know, we publish the software, we might publish upgrades to the software, but over time, really we're structuring things such that, you know, maybe eventually we become a very minor contributor and the community basically uh, governs and runs the entire system. And so, you know, every decision we make is how do we ensure that the system doesn't have any centralized authority? Okay, making sure that the system doesn't have a, if any centralized authority. So uh, what we are looking at, uh, before we draw the cutting of today's episode of Coin News Extra Interview Session, uh, I want to get your take. What's your take on blockchain and cryptocurrency? Do you see future there? Uh, I, I think it's going to be similar to what happened with the internet. I think this is going to be an ubiquitous part of the technology stack. Um, it's taking a lot longer than, uh, than people had initially expected. And I think that really comes down to, you know, the lack of enterprise grade products and, you know, the ability to have hybrid versions of this technology, you know, both, uh, you know, the ability to run something in a, private manner for things that need to be private, but also having a completely public and decentralized chain that acts as your trust layer, um, I think is really, really important. But overall, I think the industry is just getting started. I, I think it'll be multiples bigger than it is right now uh, in the next 10 years. But I can't guess a number, right? Markets are markets. They, they flow and flex all the time. Um, but you know, if you were to ask me, you know, I've been investing in the industry for nine years now, and you know it's been it's been you know up and down all the time. But the general direction has always been upwards and to the right. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm an optimist. I think uh, I think the industry is going to do very well. 
Yeah, the industry is going to do, do a very well. That's a very nice one. We see, I know the way the market is uh, currently, a lot of things are happening. And we see uh, uh, institutional investors coming in in their own ways. It has really been an amazing time out with you right now, Mano, Manoha. You are the CEO and co-founder of Casper Labs. Thank you for joining us today. Of course. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. It was our pleasure. So thank you very much. Thank you.